Rio de Janeiro. 150,000 Brazilians are waiting. Latecomers. Maybe they'll get in. Maybe they won't. Either way, they represent just a small part of the 90 million football fans who'll be filling the television parlours, grounds and stadiums all over this vast country. No sport has travelled as widely or as well as football has. Its special elements have made it the major sport in practically every country in the world. But in Brazil, it's become much more than that. It might be the climate, the temperament or that special mixture of races, but devotion to the game is carried to extremes unknown in any other country. This is seen in the way the Brazilian stars play the game and their unique status in society. For in Brazil, football is not just a game, but king of all sports. The players are not just men, but giants. You can't be too young to play football in Brazil. If you're a boy and can stumble about in two feet, then you're ready for the game. Well, almost ready. Whatever the traditional reasons Brazilian fathers may have had for wanting sons rather than daughters, today's motives are simple. A son means a potential footballer in the family. Maybe even another Pelé. Whether it's town or village, a grass pitch or a mud flat, in boots or bare feet, the Brazilian style is unmistakable. Even in friendly matches, the play is aggressive, forward, attacking, and always in earnest. And this is the trophy that started it all, the Jules Rimet Cup. In 1938, France was the host nation. The team the Brazilians fielded were brilliant. Domingo Staguia, Martin and Leonidas were among some of the star names of the period. The Brazilians were strongly fancied to take the 1938 Cup. The fact that they'd be content with third place was a reflection on team strategy rather than playing ability. In the semi-final against Italy, the eventual Cup winners, Brazil lost two goals to one. In 1950, the setting was Brazil, and Brazil were tipped to win. On the day of the final, the nation went wild, with giants like Cezinho, Ademir and Jair, Augusto, Juvenal and Bauer, Danilo and Bigode. How could they lose? But they did, even after a 1-0 lead. To Uruguay, Two goals to one. The Brazilians were stunned. It was a national disgrace. A disaster. But not for long. For when the foreign teams had departed and the crowds had gone home, there were new matches, other cup finals and the next World Cup tournament to plan for. As with all other seasons, the football was sometimes bad, sometimes good, but invariably interesting.
And as with every other season, there was excitement and atmosphere that only Brazilian soccer fans can produce. Although Brazil didn't qualify for the 1954 World Cup, the period saw many changes in the way the game was played, and the players. Some of the veterans retired, new rising stars were introduced. Potential giants like Garincha. Nicknamed the Little Bird, Garincha was to develop into one of the great players of Brazil. A tremendously gifted footballer, he was a powerhouse of speed and skill on the swerve. Not the least astonishing fact about him was that he'd been crippled from boyhood. There was another rising star, a player who was destined to be perhaps the most celebrated footballing giant of all time. By the time of the 1958 World Cup in Sweden, he was only 17 years old. In the semi-finals against France, he scored three of Brazil's five goals. And in the magnificent final against Sweden, two of the five goals that won the cup for Brazil were his. The great Pelé, of course. Brazil's triumph was celebrated in Rio, as elsewhere in the country, in characteristic style. The defeat in 1950 was partially wiped out, almost a forgotten incident. Because now the world knew what they had always believed. They not only had the greatest team in the world, in Pelé they had the greatest player. Watch him in action. One celebrated Pelé fan was the late Robert Kennedy. Pelé was too good. First nationally, then increasingly internationally, he acquired the reputation of being unbeatable. Trouble and bad temper became a regular feature of Pelé matches. Wherever he played, he was a marked man. Whether he was really unbeatable was a matter of opinion. That he could be stopped, one way or another, was a matter of fact. The attacks on Pelé were blatant and sometimes vicious. Nineteen sixty two saw Chile as the setting of the latest World Cup tournament. Against Czechoslovakia, Pelé took a shot. He miskicked, tearing a thigh muscle. He limped out of the game and the cup. This early setback, instead of demoralizing the Brazilian team, acted as a tremendous spur. 
Gilmar, the two Santos, Mauro, Jajimo, Zito, Gigi, Baba, the new boy Amarildo, Zagallo, but above all, Garincha, played like giants. They beat England 3-1, Chile 4-2. And in a memorable final against Czechoslovakia, Brazil took the cup in a magnificent three goals to one. It might have been the end of a World Cup, but back in Brazil it wasn't the end of some wonderful goals, nor for some spectacular fouls. World Cup 1966, and England is the host country. The Brazilian team arrives, favourites to win. As usual, the 25-year-old Pelé is mobbed by the press contingent. Brazilian lineup. Will they make it three times running? The first match was against Bulgaria. The game never really got going. Nevertheless, a packed stadium saw Brazil win 2-0 with two superbly taken free kicks. The first was Pelez. Garincha took the second. In the second round, it was Brazil versus Hungary. Bene took the first goal for Hungary. Tostão equalized for Brazil. Early on in the second half, Farkas put Hungary ahead. Brazil played well, but were finally defeated by a penalty from Metzoli. Brazil against Portugal. Simoes scored a first early header for Portugal. Ten minutes later, Eusebio with another header. Even now, only Morais might be able to say why he brought Pelé down the way he did. Pelé was carried off. Portugal kept up the pressure. A late goal by Fiudo raised Brazil's hopes. Minutes before the whistle, Eusebio scored again. It was 3-1 to Portugal. Brazil was out of the game and out of the cup. Long after the 1966 cup was over and won, controversy raged over the Brazil-Portugal game. When Pelé was fouled by Moraes, the English referee George McCabe allowed Moraes to stay on the field. Critics claimed that he should have been sent off. Had that happened, the outcome of the game and the entire tournament could have been transformed. But the game can't be played without referees, with or without their mistakes. It's a tough and lonely job.
After the usual post-mortems, Brazil's early dismissal served as a tremendous stimulus to do much, much better next time. The training was scientifically planned and stringently carried out by everyone. Carlos Alberto, Gerson, Jacinho, Tostón, Pelé, Rivellino, Antonio, and all the others. Each one a master footballer. Yet they trained like newcomers, as if their careers depended on it. The confidence of trainer Saldana and the team's medical advisors was unshakable. Nothing would stop Brazil from winning the cup this time. And the preliminaries to the World Cup began. In Bogotá against Colombia, Tostão scored two goals in an easy win. In this game, it was Brazil versus Venezuela. Brazil won 5-0. Tostão scoring three of the goals and Pelé two. Brazil's game against Paraguay, not as easy as the first two, nevertheless produced a clear win for Brazil. In the second phase of the elimination matches, the Brazilians repeated their brilliant form. Against Colombia, they scored an exciting six goals, almost shared across the team. Pelé, Rivelinho, Jairzinho, Edu and Tostão all scored. Tostão in superb form scored twice. Against Venezuela, another six goals scored. Pelé two, Jairzinho one, and Tostão three crowd-thrilling goals. And goals are what the game is all about. The Paraguayans again proved more troublesome. Still, Pelé scored the single goal of the match, and Brazil were ready for Mexico. As we said in the beginning, the Brazilians' devotion to football is extreme. Enthusiasm, passion, hero worship, temper and violence is seen in Brazil in a way unknown anywhere else, on and off the field.
violence of a different kind struck superstar Tostan just months before the Mexico tournament. Twice hit on different occasions on his left eye by violently kicked balls produced a dislocation of the retina. After a delicate operation, Tostan was not even allowed to touch a ball for three months. Still, he recovered, made the team and soccer history. World Cup 1970, Mexico. To end this brief look at the rise of what many regard as the finest team ever brought together by a nation, we look back at a game that had nothing to do with the drama and aggression of World Cup play. Yet it turned out to be a highly emotional occasion with tears and cheers in equal measure. It was in Rio, at the Maracanã Stadium in front of a home audience of 150,000 that Edson Orenchis de Nascimento, in other words, Pelé, scored his 1,000th goal in professional football. And this was it. For obvious reasons, the game stopped, there and then. A tribute to Pelé, of course, but also a tribute to those other giants of world soccer, the giants of Brazil.